Hello everyone. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to more Ace Attorney Chronicles specifically. Oh good. I got the window capture going already. Hello. Welcome. It's time for more VTubing hours. As it is on uh, Tuesdays. So all I remember from last time is that we were being incredibly based about nationalities. <laughs> That's all I remember. Um, like the Russians, the English, the number of stereotypes we had going on, they were everywhere. And it was lots of fun. But uh, I think we stopped at like a to be continued section, so we should be picking up right where we left off. Somehow the door of the cabin we were ended up and bolted after we made an emergency stop. Susado-san took a deep breath and then gently slid back the bolt. You! What are you doing in Mrs. Havlova's quarters? Ah, you both look unhurt. Good. Yes, we're fine. Thank you. What on earth happened? We heard something about how we were going to collide with another ship. Yes, it appears to have been a false report, though. Oh. How did that happen? There's a dense fog outside, so it's extremely difficult to see. Someone must have thought he saw a ship ahead. This person obviously triggered the alarm, and that's why he made it an emergency stop. Everything is chaos. Passengers are screaming. Crews are running everywhere. The first class area is the only quiet part of the ship at the moment. Oh. I see. Someone triggered the alarm? Does that mean that someone pressed that button outside? Ah! You, you wicked intruder! Just on black! You are the devil! S sorry? Me? Been called a lot of things before, but devil's a first. You opened my traveling case! How could you? What? No. No, we didn't touch it. That's right, Miss Pavlova. It was already open when we came into your cabin. Inspector. Um, yes? Arrest this man. I know he did it. He is a criminal. Is it not enough that he has killed a man? Da, and he is a stowaway as well. A vixen promises not to steal chicken, do you believe? Ugh. Take him away. He is a trespasser as well as everything else. Stowed away, trespassing, killing. She is right. You are a devil. <sighs> Doesn't look good, does it? There is a cell below deck. Throw him in. Tomorrow we dock in Hong Kong. Then we give you straight to police. Wait, a cell? Please, Inspector Hosanaga, is there nothing you can do? This is a Russian vessel. I really have no jurisdiction here. After my last effort to appeal to the captain's good nature, I think I'm out of options. This is terrible. This is a real crisis. Gotta find a solution. Immediately. Oh, it's nice of them to give me time to converse. And talk to people, I guess. How are we gonna get out of this? That's, that's the real question. Alright, let's see. Uh, I suppose we'll examine. Osanaga, the dresses. Ah, uh, God. <laughs> what are you doing, Holmes? Sholmes? What the? are you doing up there? Mr. Sholmes. Oh, he's got the tiara. Naturally, I was analyzing what a weight of 20,000 rubles feels like on one's head. Have I not told you that as a detective, it is my business to know what other people do not? This isn't merely tomfoolery, my boy! Oh no, no! Um, well, why were you hanging from that hook before then? Isn't it obvious? To properly assess the weight of the 20,000 rubles, naturally. I wish to determine if it would bend that conceited looking hook on the wall, so full of brag and bounce. Ugh. I don't know whether to take this man seriously or not. You again, the great detective. Ha! Inspector! I have confessed I'm, I've been looking for you. I have something to report to you most urgently. Well, oh, you might try looking for me somewhere other than a hook on the wall next time. What is to report? Speak! 
An urgent report from a great detective can mean but one thing. Yes. The case of the curious murder that took place last night, here on this vessel, the steamship Buria, has been solved by me, naturally. But what? Really? Yes, I have eliminated all other possibilities. No other explanations exist. So, allow me to illuminate all your minds. For I'm about to reveal my great detective's greatly admired great deduction to the case. Are we going to correct him in this one, probably? Ha, <laughs> you have solved it. Even Hedgehog understands this case. We all knew who was responsible for killing student boy this morning when we found criminal in the wardrobe. It is this story. He has handcuffs to prove it. I didn't do it. The trouble is, there doesn't appear to be anyone else who could have killed the victim. Because as everyone knows, the cabin door is bolted shut from the inside. That means the culprit must be someone who's inside the cabin. Yes, this is what's called a locked room mystery in detective stories. The locked room. That is put. The room was locked. Well, I can't deny that. There's no way the bolt could have been drawn across from outside the cabin. You are all quite mistaken. The cabin next door is not a so-called locked room at all. What? Oh, yes. There is another entrance. An entrance used last night by the culprit in order to gain access to the cabin despite the bolted door. What other entrance? We never discovered one. Why? It gapes open mouth at you even as we speak. The ventilator man. The ventilator? <laughs> you think this is funny? I can't even put my arm through that hole. That's because your arms are as thick as tree trunks. You're suggesting that the culprit entered and left the victim's cabin through that tiny opening? It's not possible. <sighs> but it is, dear boy. And last night, the victim even witnessed the intruder in the act of passing through the ventilator. Mr. Sholmes, do you mean... Are you referring to the words Cosmos Emma wrote in his diary? 1.23 a.m. I can hear a faint whistling sound. 1.35 a.m. What looks like some sort of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. Precisely, my dear madam. But what does it mean? What is this speckled band? The answer to that particular conundrum is in this very cabin. M Mr. Sholmes? What are you doing? There is a distinct element of danger, but fear not, I am ready. What I am about to expose for you all will see. See, will shock you to your cores. Behold! Allow me to introduce you all to the band. The Speckled Band. Uh, a snake? Indubitably. Uh, Mr. Sholmes, just one thing. Pray, what troubles you? Well, that snake isn't really speckled, is it? It looks more stripey, wouldn't you say? Hmm? Yes, you're, you're right. I, I think in this case you'd have to call it... The Striped Band, wouldn't you? You both see and observe with distinction. However, do you not think that it is precisely the trap into which the culprit wishes you to fall? Oh my goodness, really? It's, it's a trap. How exactly? I think perhaps it is time I explain the intricacies of my train of thought. Are you ready, Miss Pavlova? 
I'm sorry for the young man who died, but that's all. His death has nothing to do with me. This whole thing has nothing to do with me. There are two conclusions I have drawn from the facts. Number one. Last night your friend infiltrated the victim's cabin. Uh. And number two. That same friend was responsible for the victim losing his life. No. She turned white as a bowl of rice again. Shomas must be right. He's hit the nail on the head. The Shungun's friend killed Mr. Osogi? <laughs> it looks like he can't speak with that snake caught around his head. Is he gonna be okay? Advise as little movement as possible, Seaman. You wouldn't want the fangs of that long friend in your neck. So, everyone, let us begin. Herlock Sholmes is proud to present his logic and reasoning spectacular. There we go. It's another one of these. Intruder's identity. Miss Pavlova, moments ago you claimed the following. His death is nothing to do with me. This whole thing has nothing to do with me. Yet you cannot deceive yourself. Yes, when you recall these horrid events, your aching heart smarts with pain. And it is that very pain that evidences your inextricable link to the victim's death. And so we ask, what was the nature of this intruder that stole into the victim's cabin on that portentous night? Why, naturally. It was the friend with which you boarded this vessel, was it not? As I suspected, another telltale glance. Without doubt, your friend is the writhing serpent we see before us. And yet, that fact leaves us in a quandary. The victim's written observations on the night in question tell of a speckled band. Whereas, regrettably, this specimen's markings do not fit that description in any way. What explanation can we then give, pray? What was this sight that fell upon the victim's eyes last night? No, don't look at me. This has nothing to do with any of this. Oh, but it does. You have the answer to this quandary even now, hidden behind your back. Yes, that which you are trying of failing to conceal can only be the snake's slowed skin. Evidently, after the subtle and horrible crime, this most deadly friend of yours shed its original skin. No? Hey, I don't know what you're talking about. Last night, through the ventilator visible in this cabin, your then speckled friend slid the next door. Using the bell cord on the other side of the bridge, the serpent silently descended into the victim's quarter. In the dim light, it appeared the young gentleman who was about to lose his life as a speckled band. In summary, the nature of this friend of yours, which last night infiltrated the scene of the crime, is a rare breed of snake whose markings change each time it slows its skin. A snake so dreadful, we can only imagine it be found in the deepest depths of India. Okay. I don't I don't know how off he is. He's definitely off because she had a couple of reactions that were wrong, but I mean he's, he's pretty close to probably what actually happened. <sighs> Moving on, we come to the heart of the matter. The grim demise of the victim. How did this young man lose his life? And why? According to the data of which I have been apprised, it would appear that there was no visible sign of injury. In fact, the circumstances of the victim's death can only be explained by a terrible venom. Now, if we take that as a fact. We can reasonably imagine that there remains evidence to affirm it at the scene of the crime. Oh no, could there be? 
Yes. An examination of the deceased bodies will prove the cause of death conclusively. The almost, but not quite, imperceptible puncture wounds left by the venomous fangs will seal the truth. Yes, the vestiges of the snake bite delivered by your terrifying friend. This... this makes no sense. There's no point feigning ignorance, Miss Pavlova. After the incident, you endeavored to hide everything, didn't you? But now your involuntary glance betrays the hiding place you chose. That's right. You hid the evidence that links you to the victim's death in that traveling case. When we first met in this cabinet, it came to my attention that your case moved periodically. Your serpent assassin was restless inside, no doubt. You, you don't... It is telling that the victim made note of a low whistling sound that he heard minutes before his end. That was your signal, was it not? The sound you had used to train your serpent friend. To train? Indeed. You'd put the serpent through this ventilator and wait. After a period, you summon it back with a whistle. You couldn't know if the animal had done its duty, so you would listen for signs of life next door. If the victim appeared not to have been dispatched, you release the snake once more. Do you deny this snake has undergone such training? It's, it's not true! Having slithered through the ventilator and down the bell cord, the creature needed only to sink its fangs in once. And its venom would course through the victim's veins, ending his existence forever. That is the true nature of the speckled band that took the poor young man's life. I, I take it you're not buying this deduction of his, King, by chance. There can be no doubt. My logic is infallible. Death by Snick. Thus concludes Herlock Sholmes' great deduction of the Speckled Band. I really do like these. <laughs> the little deduction things. Like him spinning around and like snapping his fingers and the lights and everything like that. It's so much fun. <laughs> uh, it's going to be great to correct him. Just like we did before. Miss Pavlova is trying to pet Snake as a killing machine. There on the floor, you will observe a saucer of milk. The promise of food is the key to training any creature. I incredible! You've solved the mystery! Amazing! Your great deduction really lives up to its name! I see now why Herlock Sholmes has become such a household name. My dear man. It was nothing remarkable, as the Russians say. I could have done it with one left hand. Mm. Could, could I venture an opinion, Mr. Sholmes? But of course. What's on your mind? It's just... <clears throat> about your deductions before. Some things don't quite make sense to me. I welcome questions as to my method. I will answer both loudly and proudly. Oh, well, <clears throat> good. First of all, snakes are egg-laying creatures, part of the reptile family. You are well informed, madame. And reptiles, um, <clears throat> don't drink milk. Ah, it's really only mammals that like to drink milk, you see? So, I'm not sure it would be possible to train a snake using milk as a reward. <laughs> no matter. No doubt Miss Pavlova used some other treat to encourage her pet to do her bidding. Milk was merely an example. The logic holds. Well, there's something else. Snakes have no ears. Ah! Yes, so I'm, I'm not sure it would be... <clears throat> it would really be possible to signal to the snake by whistling. But, madame, 
What are the tales from Arabia? Have you not heard of the snakes that dance to the sounds of a flute? I think perhaps the performers play their music in time with the snake's natural movements. Oh. Well, I see. No hands, no feet, no ears! These creatures are so inept as to be practically useless! Don't take it out of the snakes, Mr. Sholmes. Uh, there's one other thing. You have more? Snakes use the scales on their bellies to propel themselves. So, I'm not really sure that a snake could manage to climb up a flat bell cord like the ones in these cabins. Then it should try harder. Please, don't be angry with me, Mr. Sholmes. The point is, even if the snake had gone through the ventilator to the next door cabin, it couldn't have come back without help. What I'm trying to say is that there are a number of reasons why it's difficult to imagine the snake could have had a part in this. I, I think... We need to step in and help again, Mr. Naruhodo. Oh no, you don't mean... Oh, I'm so excited. This is gonna be great. This is, this is gonna be good. <laughs> we need to modify Mr. Soma's latest deduction and turn them into the great ones they ought to be. I had a feeling that was coming. All right, let's give it a try. Just what I was waiting for, Mr. Naruhodo. Yes, right. So, cast your eyes down to your wrists again. What? He really is good with the sleight of hand. Your handcuffs are gone. Where do they go? <laughs> Fear not. I shall see they're restored after our work is done. Uh, I really wish you'd leave them off. Now, everyone, let us begin. Herlock Sholmes is proud to present his logic and reason spectacular. I don't have any, like, clues, though. Like, I didn't really... We haven't investigated at all. Also, I don't really remember how to do this. Alright, here we go. <clears throat> the correction to the deduction. Miss Pavlova, moments ago you claimed the following. Death has nothing to do with me. Whole thing has nothing to do with me. Yet you cannot deceive yourself. Yes, when you recall those horrid events, your aching heart smarts with pain. Alright, let's figure out what's going on here. She does have a pained expression on her face. It's true. She looks as though Cosmo Sama's death is weighing heavily on her mind. But you're not sure Mr. Holmes has quite has read her quite correctly, is that? Could there be some other way to interpret her expression then? So take a moment and really look closely at Miss Pavlova. What else is causing her pain? Well, probably this dead cat. Look, there's there's like a kitty cat over there. Also the snake. Oh! Oh, she has a claw scratch on her. Hmm. We don't really get to observe the models too often. It's kind of nice. She's got earrings. Look at that. Her right ear. Left ear. Oh, she has two different earrings. Huh. Weird. Kind of neat that you can select the ears. But yes, no doubt it's this. Yes! Yes. When you recall those horrid events, that claw scratch smarts with pain. Indeed. And simple observation reveals that the wound is fresh. Miss Pavlova, did you in fact receive that scratch sometime last night? When I think about the young man who died next door, I feel so sad. And when I am sad, the pain from this wound is worse. And it is that very pain that evidences your inextricable link to the victim's death. So, we ask, what was the nature of this intruder that stole into the victim's cabin on that portentous night? Why, 
Naturally, it was the friend with which you boarded this vessel with, was it not? Ah, as I suspected, another telltale glance. No, she's looking at the picture, right? Without a doubt, your writhing friend is... Sorry, your friend is the writhing serpent we see before us. Seems likely that the scratch mark on the back of Miss Pablova's hand was made by this friend of hers, doesn't it? Except, snakes don't have claws, do they? Man, Naruhodo is so smart. Did you guys know that snakes don't have claws? They don't. Whoa, whoops. They don't even have hands or feet on which claws might grow. Imagine if snakes had a claw on like the back of their tail. If that snake isn't their pet, what is? What's the true identity of this friend of hers? Let's follow her gaze. It's right there. The picture of the cat. Also the cat, I, I guess more stereotypically, cats drink milk. Though, isn't it only kittens that drink milk? Ah, look at the photograph in this frame. Must be something Miss Pavlova brought with her when she ran away. She is exceptionally beautiful, isn't she? Yes, that's true, but personally, it's a little black creature she's holding that caught my eye. Maybe we'd better take a closer look at this. Kitty! Look at the little cat Miss Pavlova is cuddling here. Oh, what a cute little kitten. It could vie with you, couldn't it, naruto san For the blackest outfit. Hmm, a black kitten. And from the look of this picture, at least, Miss Poblova seems very attached to it. Yes! Without doubt, your friend is the little kitten we see before us. Yes! The scratch on the back of your hand makes that abundantly clear. Oh no. The whereabouts of this black kitten isn't clear, but what is clear is that you brought the animal with you when you ran away, didn't you? Yeah. Darka is my best. Its name is Darka. Darka. I, I like, I'm like seventy-eight percent sure that I bet you in the Japanese version of the game, its name is just Kuro. Like Kuro Neko. Kuro the Kuro Neko. I couldn't leave it behind. Darko would appear to be a Russian blue. And yet, that fact leaves us in quite a quandary. The victim's written observation on the night in question tell of a speckled band. Whereas, regrettably, this specimen's markings do not fit that description in any way. What explanation can we then give, pray? What was the sight that fell upon the victim's eyes last night? No, don't look at me. This has nothing to do with any of this. Oh, but it does. So you have the answer to this quandary even now, hidden behind your back. Yes, that which you are trying, but failing to conceal, can only be... Do you see that? She just took something out of her pocket and hid it behind her back. And she just left it in her pocket, no one ever known. I guess ploys like that are Mr. Shulm's specialty. He's ever so cleverly forced her to reveal something. That deduction was a specialty. Or maybe making, making me believe that was a ploy too. Anyway, I find it hard to believe that's the skin of a snake. In which case, just what is Miss Pavlova hiding behind her back? Um, let me see dad ass, yo. Wait, what is this? Is it a... Is it a cat toy? Well, it is speckled. And it is a band. But... What is it? It seems to be soft and fluffy. A long piece of cloth of some sort. And that looks like a handle at one end. I think it may be a cat's toy. Sort of thing is... Sort of common in the West. How is that a toy for cats? Cats like to chase the band around and paw at it. Kittens in particular love that sort of play. You only, only need to wave it in front of them and they pounce to catch it. <laughs> that sounds positively adorable. 
Alright. What's she actually trying to hide? The cat toy. That which you are trying but failing to conceal is the cat toy. Yes, the thing you are trying but failing to conceal is uh, <coughs> a cat's toy. Precisely. And the true nature of the now infamous spectral band. It was this toy that you dangled through the ventilator. You waved it around, I presume. Naturally, the victim could not fail to notice it. But why? For what reason? My dear boy, there can be only one answer to that. After her feline friend disappeared through the ventilator into the neighboring cabin, Miss Pavlova attempted to use the speckled cat's toy to incite the creature to return. Oh. In summary, the nature of this friend of Miss Pavlova's, which last night infiltrated the scene of the crime, is a blithesome Russian blue breed of a cat by the name of Darka. Wait, what if... What if a Sogi is just allergic to cats and died of allergic reaction or something? Although, no, it can't be, because he wouldn't have written his last words in Russian like he did, I don't think. So, there's got to be something else. This could be like a red herring kind of thing, where this happened and then he died after. We know that the door probably locked because the ship stopped. Hmm. A truly troublesome feline, young Docker's for to be. <sighs> you have caged once found. You will forgive us for borrowing the photograph of your pet, Miss Pavlova. You think the murderer has the cat? That would make sense, actually, because it's not around anymore. It was after I gave her her food last night. That's when it happened. Where did the stink come from, though? She scratched the back of my hand and then ran up the bell cord. Before I could do anything, she hid. She had disappeared through the ventilator. Darka, she's so naughty. A beloved kitten. All right, here comes some meat. Moving along, we come to the heart of the matter. The grim demise of the victim. How did this young man lose his life? And why? According to the data of which I had been apprised, it would appear that there was no visible signs of injury. Huh. In fact, the circumstances of the victim's death can only be explained by a Terrible deduction. What Mr. Sholmes says is true. There are no signs of a wound anywhere in Cosmo Sama's body. That's right. But Mr. Sholmes seems to be unaware of one very important detail. Cosmo wasn't poisoned. Yes, it would seem so. Let's give him the information he's missing now. Uh, is this. has a cervical spine injury. In fact, the circumstances of the victim's death can only be explained by the post-mortem report. Ah, yes, I knew it was one or the other. His neck was... Indeed, the breaking of the cervical vertebrae is fatal. Only that Goliath would be strong enough to survive that. Seeming strong enough is this immortal freak, you know. The jury is out. Anyway, we have on good authority that the victim's neck was broken. Now, if we take that as a fact, we can reasonably imagine that there remains evidence to affirm it at the scene of the crime. Yeah, definitely. I wonder if, um, if the cat was in a bag and the snake was in a bag and perhaps they got mixed up at some point. And that's why the snake is in this room now. Yes, an examination of the deceased's body will prove the cause of death conclusively. 
Cosmo died because his neck was broken. In other words, he was probably struck by something or someone. It's a distinct possibility. No weapons have been found. Presumably, Darker didn't silently creep up beyond Cosmo dealing with a fatal blow. I suppose it's possibly had a fall and hit the ground awkwardly. It could have been a terrible act of misfortune that he broke his neck completely by accident. Oh, yes, a bad fall could explain it. Uh, yeah, I guess so, because a bad fall would also explain the, um, the door being locked. Rather hard to believe in Cosmo, somehow, though. He wasn't a clumsy man. Hmm. We need to fix this deduction somehow. Is there anything on the scene that could explain what happened? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what we have, so I'm going to go ahead and save real quick, just in case. Alright, an examination of the deceased body. Let's see. Um, LB review the scene. Return to question. Uh... I don't think there's really anything here, per se. Prove the cause of death. Piece of a small glass object. I mean, this is, this is the bell from the cat, actually, right? Oh, he, did he trip on the cat? Is that what happened? Did he trip on the cat? Yes. Yes. An examination of the mark on the floor will prove the cause of death conclusively. This particular mark, so prominently visible next to the victim's body, is a deposit of shoe polish. Shoe polish? Indeed. Positively identified by a little analysis device I constructed, which I carry now as a matter of course. Beeswax, tallow, and dye were my results. The undeniable ingredients of shoe polish. What is tallow, by the way? Like, I've, I've read it before in books and those things, but I don't actually know what tallow is. It's, it's like a burned something, right? Is it fat? Tallow is a rendered form of beef or mutton fat. Primarily made up of triglycerides. In industry, tallow is not strictly defined as beef or mutton fat. It's just animal fat that conforms to certain technical criteria, increasing its melting point. So it's beeswax, fat, and dye. Interesting. Now we know how to make shoe polish, I guess. And the color of the polish is a perfect match to the color of Mr. Osoe's lace leather shoes. Looking at this mark, it's not hard to imagine what happened. For some reason, Mr. Sogi must have caught his foot at that point on the floor and tripped. Please, no. And by a dreadful turn of misfortune, caught his neck against some immovable object as he fell to the floor. Suffering a fatal blow to the spine, the victim's vertebrae shattered, and in that instant he lost his life. No. Ah, I think that she wrote it. Because if he severed his spine, he didn't write shit. I don't know anything about this. Is that really true, Miss Pavlova? What about the evidence left at the scene where Mr. Asoe lost his life? Yes, the facts are clear. Dave's me. You did all you good to conceal the incriminating evidence. But now your involuntary glance betrays the hiding place you chose. That's right. You hid the evidence that links you to the victim's death. Probably on your desk. Don't believe it. Cosmo someone merely tripped over and... And now he's no more? It can't be true. I refuse to accept it. I know it's hard to believe, but the mark on the floor does seem to suggest that's what happened. But... I know that's part of Mr. Sholm's deduction is right. Miss Pavlova is trying to hide some evidence that would prove it. Here in this cabin, somewhere in the direction that she just cast her eyes. Where, I wonder? Let's have a good look around. The answer must be here somewhere. I'm going to bet you that it's probably the other half of the bell. Ready? 
We're gonna we're gonna turn. Uh, can I? Let's examine the wastebasket. All right, perhaps on the first one comes. Um, let's see. Uh, there's not much rubbish in there yet. Aha! Ho 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 ho! What's that? It's a broken piece of glass, isn't it? Yes, it is. I feel like I've seen it somewhere before. And if it looks familiar, perhaps more than your mind simply playing tricks on you. Yes. That's right. You hid the evidence that links you to the victim's death in that waste paper basket. Here we have a fragment of some intricate glass object. It would seem. One that has a familiar air, in fact. Precisely. We found another piece of broken glass on the floor of Mr. Asogi's cabin. And as you can see, the two pieces fit together perfectly. Oh no. So, Miss Pavlova, shall we consider what this tells us? Why would it be that part of this glass object, which was evidently broken at the scene of the victim's death, should be found in the waste paper basket in your cabin? Yeah. I can't make a high-pitched noise like that, I'm sorry. You're well acquainted with this glass bell, are you not? I... I... I don't... I don't know. And that hushed Russian accent of yours won't save you this time, dear girl. Why? Because we have conclusive evidence linking you to the bell in question. What? Take it away, Mr. Naruto. Uh, yes. The evidence linking Miss Pavlova and the little glass bell. That would be... Kuroneko. Oh, yeah. Yes! If you look at this photograph, you can clearly see, hanging from darkest collar, the very glass bell in question. Uh. The truth has caught up with you, Miss Pavlova. The young man who lost his life last night did so after a truly inauspicious fall. And the cause of that fateful stumble? The sight of your cat. Your absent feline friend, Daka. I almost wanted to say a different word there. <clears throat> I couldn't... I couldn't tell anyone. I'm sorry. Death by tripping over a cat. What a way to go. Deduction complete. Elementary, my dear chat. Imagine if, like, imagine if Sherlock Holmes streamed on Twitch, and, like, rather than having Watson, he's like, Elementary, my dear Twitch chat. <laughs> like, do that. Oh, that'd be good. Why don't you tell us now, Miss Pavlova? Tell us exactly what happened last night. It was a little after one in the morning. It was so late, but I hadn't had time to feed Darka. So I gave her some food. And then, all of a sudden, she scratched me and jumped out of my hands. People do say that cats become very anxious and nervous in new environments. She was so fast. She disappeared through the ventilator before I could stop her. And that is how you acquired the rather nasty wound on the back of your hand, I take it. Yes. And I had read the, um, <laughs> rules on the wall. I knew that I was not allowed Darko with me. Yes, modern science suggests that animals can carry infectious diseases. It's a precaution, really. So I listened and listened, trying to hear if there was some noise in the next cabin. It was very quiet. I was sure if someone was there, he must be sleeping. So at that point, you thought it safe to try to lure the kitten back again. By dangling the end of the toy through the ventilator and into the adjoining cabin. 
<sighs> Dark always loves this toy, but it didn't work. Nothing worked. I tried using her favorite toy. I tried visiting to her softly, but nothing. She didn't return. So the faint whistling sound Cosmo wrote about his diary was Miss Poblova trying to retrieve her pet. Cats have a propensity to, to remain hidden in the shadows when frightened. Yes. So there was nothing else I could do. I just had to wait until she had calmed down. But then... Meow, thought. Yeah. I... I nearly passed out with shock. I heard her cry out and then... Oh, it was such a dreadful bang. Then afterwards... Nothing. It was totally silent. Cosmo was... From the appearance of the brown mark on the floor, it seems likely that what you heard was the victim stepping on the glass bell and tripping up. Wait, he stepped on the bell? The SS Bureau is a large vessel, but even she can pitch and roll violently without warning. If Mr. Osogi was already off balance, as a result of the ship lurching when the kitten got under his feet. The combination of unfortunate factors could easily have caused him to fall over. But what became of the kitten afterwards? In the end, I managed to get it to come back through the ventilator. Yet Darka is nowhere to be seen. Ah, I must have forgotten to lock my case. And now she's disappeared again. Gracious, that cat is as insufferably reckless as I am. Well, he knows something about himself at least. When I woke up this morning, I heard that the young man in the cabin next to mine had died. But I couldn't bring myself to tell anyone what had happened. <sighs> I was too scared. Scared that they would send me back. Oh, hold on a minute. What about the snake? You're right. Where is it? If the snake isn't your friend, Miss Pablo, then whose is it? And where did it come from? What on earth is such a dangerous creature doing on board the ship? Uh, it's clearly Stroganoff's. Oh, I didn't say. Snake is my friend. His name, Pierrotto. Hmm? What? What? Th that snake belongs to you? He escaped from cage when emergency alarm sounded. I was looking for him. I did not expect him to find... I expect to find him in here. Yes, how did that snake get into this cabin? But... Animals are not permitted on board. <laughs> we are at sea for one year. You want to be so long without close friend? Without someone who understands. Couldn't you find someone a little more... Human who understands you better? But my dear burly fellow. A gargantuan venomous snake. Surely you can appreciate the danger you're putting everyone in. No venom. Hmm? Piro's court does not have venom. He is harmless. Very long, but very gentle. He is adorable. Like Granny. It's... Venomless. Yes. Now he is hungry, so he is in bad mood. But once I feed him, you will see big smile. And you feed him... what? Milk, I suppose. Ha! <laughs> like they say they milk chickens! Ridiculous. The next they drink milk are only in stupid stories. Pirosko eats mouses. Big, fat, round mouses like Ashley from Resident Evil 4. Huh. Oh, so... Is that what the mouse trap in the passageway out there is for? Of course! How else can I catch my friend's favorite food? Nothing says top of the food chain like the look in their eyes right now. It refuses to drink milk. It can't hear a whistle. It can't climb up a bow cord and it's not even venomous. How the deuce did something so inept land a starring role? It's not my fault. I do not make up stories. My Piros has nothing to do with this incident. So that's what happened. 
Well, that's the truth behind my best friend's tragic death. I don't think we have the whole truth yet. Where did the, uh, where did the Russian come from? Because, like, if he fell and hurt himself, then how did he write? Miss Pavlova. I understand the difficult situation you found yourself in. And I do sympathize. But please remember this. A young man lost his life. If you're going to attempt to cover up your guilt with lies, then... Then no matter what the circumstances, I cannot forgive you. But... What are you talking about, Miss Mikotoba? What lies? Miss Pavlova just confessed everything. Not true. This is a series of unfortunate events. An accident. <laughs> I'm no great detective like Mr. Sholmes. I don't have a gift for knowing the truth. But even I can see. That was not the truth. Don't you agree, Mr. Naruhoto? To be perfectly honest. Yes. There is a discrepancy in Miss Pablova's story. I'm sure of it. Just can't put my finger on it. I confess. I was intending to let Scotland Yard deal with any outstanding issues on this matter. Oh. I'm only present here for a very specific reason. The truth is. You, Miss Naruto, are simply a distraction. A distraction? I do hope you've not been finding your shackles too uncomfortable. Ah, not again. Why did he do that? Especially as they're on your wrists as a result of my intervention. I was rather hoping I could resolve matters before we made our next port call. Y you were... You were, Mr. Sholmes. Yes, but I overlooked one important detail. The deceased young man was a very close companion of yours. Was he not? Yes. Cosmo was my closest friend. I owned him my freedom, even. In that case, we must follow this to its conclusion. No further distractions. You must uncover the real truth here, Mr. Naruto. Whatever that may be. The key to this is the discrepancy in Miss Pablova's story, I'm sure. If I can chase that down, maybe the truth will become clear. The truth about how you really died. About how that senior cabin really came to be. Alright, I'll see what I can do. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Naruhoto. So then, shall we begin? Yes. What we should ponder first... Is the victim who lost his life in a cabin that was bolted shut from the inside. Was this truly an unfortunate accident? Or was it in fact no accident at all? That is what we must establish in the first instance. But we've already established it, haven't we? The man tripped over the kitten that had climbed to his cabin via the ventilator. Tragic, yes, but still an accident. Wait, let's just take a step back. It doesn't make sense if that's really what happened, does it? I'm going to have to ask you to spell it out for me, I'm afraid. Yes, it's starting to take shape now. There's a clear contradiction between the facts and Miss Pavlova's story here. The evidence is right there in Cosmo's cabin. It's undeniable. His death couldn't possibly have been a mere accident. Really? Let us show our hand, Mr. Naruto. Time to present the evidence and save our game.
The evidence that proves unequivocally that the victim's death was no mere accident. Uh, I honestly think it's this. Just because of the Russian words. But is there anything else at all? But there's also the ship's log. That are, like, this is very conspicuous as well. Right, that there's nothing after 2 a.m. So, no mere accident. Uh, I, I wonder if it could, if it could be both. Because this looks like they framed us. Yes. It's either this or the ship log. The truth is clearly recorded in this photographic print. There's no way that Mr. Soe could have left this message on the floor. That script. It's Russian, isn't it? Indeed it is. The word written means wardrobe. I see what you mean. Most people leave a dying message in their native language. Japanese is his, in this case. But, but maybe he was studying Russian. It is a simple language. He, he could have picked it up very fast. That doesn't seem likely. It's actually not the point. It makes no difference whether he knew Russian or not. Sorry? What do you mean? Exactly what I said before. There's no way that Esther Asogi could have left this message on the floor. And the reason why is clearly explained in here. Damage to the cervical vertebrae resulting in instant death. Instant death. Which means, after the victim fell to the floor, he couldn't possibly have written anything. Because he was already dead. That's not the only reason, either. There's something else we found in Mr. Sogi's cabin. A remnant of something that couldn't possibly have been there. What Miss Pavlova told us was true. What? So Sarasana has noticed it, too. Putting this message on the floor aside, there's something else that gives the truth away. Another piece of evidence that proves this was no accident. In other words... Oh, maybe this is where it comes in. I think it's the ship's log. Yes. What point are you trying to make with that evidence? Starting to see how Cosmos' death really happened. I think. I think that you are starting to see nothing of the sort. And that was the evidence to prove it. Okay, not the ship's log. If it was no accident, then what we sh then what we should be looking for is one of two things. The absence of something you would expect to find at the scene of an accident, or the presence of something you wouldn't. Most competitively put, my dear madame. I see. I confess your rather languid IC doesn't fill me with confidence, Mr. Narohodo. Don't worry, Mr. Narohodo. I believe in you. Well, more than Mr. Sholmes does, anyway. Okay. Um. Uh. Wait, did it just start me over again? No, okay. Something else that gives the truth away. Okay, so it's something unusual in the cabin. Proves that there was no accident. Um, we have the paper seal. What else was in the cabin? There's Cosmo's diary. The scuff marks. Uh, gosh, I don't. I don't know. What am I missing here? The, I mean, this is the thing that says wardrobe, sure, but... Or, sorry, that says keep out. Would that be... That wouldn't be yet, right? I, guess... I mean, he was writing in his diary. Um... 
at 1.30. It's not the ship's log. I mean, it's, I guess it's the bell, right? Because yes. the bell is in both rooms, so that's unusual. This, this piece of broken glass next to the mark on the floor. But that's the glass bell the kitten had around its neck. We already know all about that. It was broken in half and the victim tripped over the cannon and fell. We already have a satisfactory explanation. Where's the flaw in that logic? Unfortunately, there's a very big flaw. A fatal flaw. A fatal frame. If that's really what happened. Then how did one half of the bell end up back here in this cabin? Okay, that's, that's fair. It's wrong that we found the other half of the glass bell in that waste paper basket. Would you care to explain that, Miss Pavlova? <coughs> oh no. Both these pieces of evidence clearly point to the same conclusion. That when Mr. Asogi died last night in his cabin, there was someone else in the room. And that same person deliberately arranged the scene to disguise the truth. In order to cover up his or her own guilt. Yes, there was someone else present in Mr. Asogi's. You are wasting time. Someone else was there? Da, of course we know this. What are you talking about? Bulkhead was bolted shut from inside. There was no way in and out. Oh, yes. The only, only other person in cabin when young student died was you. Yes. It's true. I was in the cabin when it happened. You were shut inside the cabin wardrobe, to be precise with the details. But I don't know Russian. There's no way I would have left that message. Not would have. There's no way you could have left that message to be precise about the details. Would you mind? <laughs> Forgive me, my dear fellow. As I was saying, the person in question wrote the word wardrobe in Russian on the floor. In an attempt to incriminate me for the crime, even though I had been asleep in there the entire time. And then, the same person picked up the broken glass bell that had fallen to the floor for fear of it becoming evidence that would show how Mr. Asogi really died. But why wouldn't this person have taken all the pieces of the bell away? Leaving half behind was always going to raise questions. Yes. Well. Um. It was past one o'clock in the early hours of the morning. The cabin would have been quite dark. The single small lamp suspended from the ceiling would barely have cast any light on the floor there. Little wonder, then, that the culprit failed to notice a fragment of the tiny item. You all suspect me, don't you? Semen Stroganoff. Nina is woman of sea. She is daughter of strong sailor. Two years ago, they noticed her dancing skills and she went away to join ballet company. But before, she was dancer on this ship. A member of ship's band. You do not accuse ship's angel of being criminal. So that's it. You say that when young student died, Nina was there in his cabin. But that is not possible. I give my tooth. Hmm. Well, this is almost interesting. And why would you give your tooth, pray? How can you be so sure? <laughs> You are a great detective, you should know. Look through the night. Cabin book it was but a shot from inside. Nobody could go into cabin. Not me, not, not anyone. Or you want to tell me the killer can walk through locked doors? Yeah, it's impossible. Ah, he's right. But wait, I've read about this in detective stories. People often tie threads around door latches so they can open and close them from the outside. Thread? Are you stupid? These bulkheads are not barn doors. Certainly not. These are watertight doors, as one would expect to find on any modern steamship. Constructed of heavy steel with not a gap in sight. No thread or needles or madness could have been used. No, no of course not. Thought so too. But Mr. Naruto suggested it earlier, so... 
So Sato san how can you shift it onto me like that? So Seaman Stroganov has a valid point. The cabin door couldn't have been bolted shut from the outside. Not necessarily. What? Well, I put it to you that I could bolt this cabin door without laying a finger on it. Hmm. And in this very cabin, we can see the traces of the method I have in mind having been used before. I don't believe it. Well, Mr. Naruto, I believe you know what I mean, don't you? I do. I do. One way does spring to mind, yes. Do you really know what Mr. Shomans means, Mr. Naruto? Yes, and so should you. Because we've seen it happen. Indeed we have. So, would you care to do the honors, Mr. Naruhodo? Point out the telling signs of the method that was used to slide the cabin door bolt across from the other side. Right here. Right, right, right here. Yes. Look at the bookcase there. See how all the books and things on it have toppled over? That must have happened when the ship made its emergency stop before. Yes, that's right. It's a very powerful vessel, after all. When the engines are thrown into reverse, a violent jolt goes across the entire ship. Any small objects that aren't fastened down are bound to fall over. I believe... Yes, it's what's known as the force of inertia acting on the objects. Is there nothing Susaro-san doesn't know? Or that isn't in her book, at least? Well, whatever it's called, the same force that pushed over these books on the bookcase also made something else in this cabin move. The bolt on the cabin door. <gasps> it was very obvious just after the emergency stop that the ship made earlier. We had come into this cabin not long before, and we hadn't bolted the door. But then... Hello? Is anybody in there? Shout if you need assistance! Well, that sounds like... Inspector Hosanaga. Ah, uh, yes! That's it! When the ship stopped suddenly, the ball flew across and locked the door! Yes, it's made of metal, but it's small and light enough to be moved by the ship's sudden change of speed. Or the force of inert... Ineptia, <laughs> if you want to call it that. Uh, are you trying to say that last night? After Mr. Sogi was killed. High quality animation right here. The SS Burra made another emergency stop? When I woke up this morning and looked around the cabin, I thought it looked a little odd. All the books on the shelves had toppled over, and all the ornaments. It was almost as if someone had run their hands across the shelves and deliberately knocked everything over. Oh, yes, I remember that. And I stood them all up again, didn't I? Then when we came into this cabin, we were surprised to see the same thing in here. All the books and everything had toppled over, just like in Mr. Asogi's cabin. <gasps> oh my! Do you have anything to say about this, Miss Pavlova? Are you out of your mind? You say Burya made emergency stop? It does seem a little far-fetched. How could that possibly have happened? Unless you're saying that the culprit is actually someone from the engine room? Oh, it is simple enough. Hmm? Are you forgetting the button in the passageway outside? You used to trigger the emergency alarm. Ah, yes, of course. There was a notice, wasn't there? Telling you only to press the button in times of emergency. On dark nights when the fog is dense, the captain cannot afford to rely on the eyes of his lookout alone. Hence the placement of a number of buttons around the vessel to allow any crewman to raise the alarm. The sort of button one is almost compelled to press to satisfy one's curiosity. Wait, it was, it was you? When the button is pressed, two things happen in the interest of safety. The emergency alarm bell rings and the vessel comes to a complete stop. As indeed it did a little earlier today. Mm. 
Mr. Sholmes, surely it wasn't you who... As I always say, a button has but one purpose in life. To be pressed, whatever the occasion. He sounds almost proud of himself. How dare you mess with sheep! I report you to Captain. You are in much trouble now. <laughs> now, now. I'm sure all that can wait until later. Let us not overlook the fact that we have now learnt a valuable lesson. When the vessel makes an emergency stop, the bolts on the cabin door slide closed. So, what we na must now consider. This all comes down to one thing. Last night, after what happened to Mr. Osogi, did this ship make an emergency stop or did it not? You are idiots! Burya is a huge ship with many passengers. If we make emergency stop, even in the middle of night, there will be chaos everywhere. What are your thoughts, Mr. Naruhodo? Well, it's certainly possible that some kind of emergency happened last night. We have evidence to support that idea. Really? What evidence, Mr. Naruhodo? Fascinating. Do show us, my good man. What evidence promotes the theory that some emergency gri emergency gripped this vessel last night? I do believe this is the ship's log. Yes. Seaman Stroganov, it's your duty to patrol the first class area of the ship. Isn't that right? Da, that is correct. Why? And the ship's log here. This would be where you record the details of your duties. What are you doing with that? That is mine! Ah, you rather carelessly left it atop the little makeshift burrow in the passage right out there. But as responsible passengers, we took it into our care with a mind to return it to you later. I left it there on purpose. That is where I put it always. The point is, look at what you usually record. It's clear that under normal circumstances, you write the phrase nothing to report every 30 minutes. But from 2 o'clock last night until first light this morning, Nothing was recorded at all. Nothing? Nothing recorded in the log. That is, uh... Duh! Because nothing happened. But if nothing happened, you would normally write nothing to report, wouldn't you? Indeed so. Which tells us that shortly after 2 a.m., something happened here aboard the SS Pura. something sufficiently significant to make you forget to fill in the ship's log, in fact. Are you suggesting that the ship really did make an emergency stop in the middle of the night? Stop talking rubbish! If I'm perfectly honest, I find that a little hard to believe myself. Oh? Why? Well, because if something as major as an emergency stop really had happened, Surely all of us would have noticed. No, because we were all drugged. That's very true. Thanks to the emergency stop we experienced earlier, we all know what it feels like now. The ship lurched so violently, and the alarm bell was so loud. I can't imagine that anybody would sleep through that. Even if it happened in the dead of night. No, well, no. That's... That's a good point. <laughs> what of... The throbbing. Uh, sorry, what do you mean? Your head, man. The throbbing on your head since this morning. We have all suffered with it. Ah! Uh. Oh. Yes, I, I have had a headache, you're right. In fact, I haven't been feeling myself since I woke up today. Nor have I! My head has been feeling heavy ever since dawn. Yes, you've all been afflicted, haven't you? Just as I suspected. He's right, my head's been throbbing today too. And since eating dinner yesterday evening, everything has felt sort of hazy. Can't really remember anything that happened after I climbed back inside the wardrobe. Then, the first thing I noticed this morning was the throbbing pain in my head. I had already been dragged out of the wardrobe. and had those handcuffs put on me by that point. Why didn't I wake up when all that was happening to me? 
tell me, Mr. Naruto. You boarded this vessel as a stowaway, didn't you? Oh, <clears throat> uh, well, yes. Sorry. The stowaway class of accommodation doesn't usually include meals. What did you survive on? Ah, well, Cosmo looked after me. He was always happy to share his meals. So you enjoy some of the whole roast chicken dish that was served yesterday evening, I take it? Yes! In fact, I had all of that. Cosmo wasn't fond of chicken. Oh, really? So the victim didn't eat any of the chicken at all? That's right, you didn't touch it. Is that relevant? My dear fellow, does that not strike you? Oh, Mr. Sholmes, do you mean to say... There was something wrong with the chicken? I do. No. Really? Is that really true? The meal prepared for the passengers last night had been tampered with. Tampered with by the addition of a sopor soporific. Designed to induce a very deep slumber in those who consumed it. A sleeping drug? Do you mean... Whoever did this laced every meal with a sleeping drug so no one would notice the ship's emergency stop? Mr. Naruhoto, of course that's not what Mr. Shomes means. What a far-fetched idea. Precisely. Lacing every meal of every passenger on a board with a soporific drug would certainly be impossible. Unless, that is, every single member of the crew was a conspirator. What? Mr. Shomes! Well, Seaman. The Oh. Do you think they did it to get her on board? Because she's the ship's band angel or whatever? Well, I'm sorry to say that any more deception in this matter will get you nowhere. If you refuse to talk, there would have to be an inquiry made through the shipping company, of course. And were that to happen, every member of the crew, and the captain himself, will be hauled over the coals. For aiding and abetting a renegade. Please, no more. I will tell everything. Ugh. I cannot make problems like this for everyone anymore. These crewmen are your former comrades, I believe. Yes. So when I decided to... <laughs> to run away, I asked them to help me. We all agreed to help everyone together. She threw away everything. Her fame in the ballet, Mother Russia. We wanted to help her angel. I don't believe it. You are right. We put sleeping drug in chicken last night. Yes, I remember now. I did notice chewing on a lump of something strange and bitter at one point. Duh. We could not make all the drug. How do you say, uh, dissolve? Ah, talk about heavy seasoning. At midnight, in the waters near Shanghai, we had brought our angel on board. She was helped by comrade on shore with a small fishing boat. While all the passengers of the SS Bureau slept soundly, thanks to the almost magical effects of the slumber-inducing potion their evening meals had contained. So that's what happened. The only people awake on the ship last night were the crew, people who disliked chicken, and the newly boarded passenger, Miss Pavlova. And that means it would have been possible for you. You could have used the emergency stop trick to lock Cosmo Cabin's door. Hmm. But, but that doesn't make sense. The, the timing doesn't match up in that case. Because they would press the emergency stop, like, before she was on board. So that would, that would mean that Cosmo had to have died before him. But if he tripped on the cat, then she was on board already. Something's not adding up here. Well, how does that make sense? Surely every cabin would have ended up locked in that case, and there would have been a complete chaos. No, I wouldn't say so. What? Ah, of course. Just like us, all the other passengers would have eaten their evening meal of chicken in their cabins. 
After which they would have been overwhelmed by tiredness because of the sleeping drug. Quite. And accordingly. All passengers were already in their cabins for the night. Yes! The overwhelming majority of passengers would habitually sleep with their cabin doors bolted anyway. So not one of them would have found it remarkable to find the door locked in the morning. In summary, in order to fasten the bolt of a single cabin door on the ship, the culprit brought the entire vessel to an emergency stop in the early hours of the morning. You have talked a long time and said many things. What is point? The point is what I said earlier. There was somebody else present on the scene when the victim lost his life last night. Someone who left a message in Russian on the floor in an attempt to incriminate another. Someone who tried desperately to hide the broken fragment of glass that would reveal the culprit's identity. Then someone who will be used the ship's emergency stop procedure in order to lock a door. All told, a busy night. But, but, hey, I don't know about any of this. I'm just a little girl. You like to speak with your long English words and explain your clever ideas. But I am sailor, and sailors don't listen to long, boring stories we don't believe. Sailors like me. We trust only what we see with our eyes. A laudable trait. What? Well, I am quite of the same disposition, my good man. Observation to me is everything. Mr. Navarro. Oh, yes. Do you hear it? The accusatory cry of guilt on the wind? What's... What accusatory cry of guilt? It's, sorry, you, you've lost me. Proof of involvement, man. But you can't hear such a call with your ears. No. You must hear it with your eyes. For observation is the basis of all deduction. What are you talking about? I believe the time has come. For one final logic and reasoning spectacular. To expose the truth. So, Mr. Narahodo, your assistance, if you please. With what exactly, Mr. Sholmes? With observation, my dear fellow, just as I said, of these two prevarkatas. Observation? If you remember, Mr. Narahodo, we know that somebody tried to fabricate evidence, don't we? By tampering with the scene of Mr. Osogi's death. What we're looking for is some trace of evidence that one of these two was there when it happened. Precisely. <laughs> you are delightfully quick to grasp my meaning. All right, I'll see what I can see. We're looking for a trace of evidence that shows someone else was there last night when Cosmo died. I don't know. They they wearing like shoes. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, yes. Seaman Stroganoff. You seem to have quite a large purple stain on the back of your white uniform there. Yeah. That, yes, I, uh, I don't know where the dirt comes from. So nothing in particular comes to mind about the stain. What are you trying to say? It would appear that the significance of the stain has escaped your attention, Simon. Allow us to make it plain. It's a very large pearl stain on the back of Simon Stroganoff's uniform. I think what made it is clear. Indeed it is. So, Mr. Darodo, present the evidence that proves it. My pleasure. The evidence that proves what the stain on the back is. I mean, this. The purple ink. Yes, it's this photograph and the ink it shows. That's what caused the stain on your uniform. Ink. A rather unusual color of ink. Purple. Ah. Ah, 
Ah, the penny drops at last. Now you see the significance. The Russian word on the floor next to the victim's body was written in purple ink. And the stain on the back of your uniform is ink of the exactly the same color. If the ink had been dry, it couldn't possibly have stained your uniform in that way. Which means... You must have been present in the cabin in the moment immediately after the ink was spilt. Alright, yes. It was me. I did it. Everything. I arranged everything in Dead Student's cabin to make it look like Wardrobe Man did it. Then I pressed button to make Burya do emergency stop and bought cabin door shut. I did everything so no one would suspect our angel. Wait, did he... Okay. Okay, that makes more sense. So they didn't use the emergency stop to stop the boat to pick up the girl. <sighs> Sorry. Gotta, gotta drink lots of water when you play this game. Don't worry, Angel. Let me do talking. It was after one in the morning I was on duty patrolling passageway. Then our angel came to me. She was white, like sheet. Biff, please, you must help me. I went with her. The door to cabin number one was open. When I looked inside, I saw student boy on floor. What happened here? Please, don't tell anyone. My little one. My little furry friend. Everything that happened in cabin is like Angel told you. The kitten escaped through the... Oh, sorry. The kitten escaped through the ventilator in Mr. Osogi's cabin. Then he tripped over it and broke his neck when he fell to the floor? Yes, that is right. So after the incident when the cat ran away, Miss Pavlova then visited the cabin next to hers? Only to find his occupant lying lifeless on the floor. She said she was worried when she heard the sound of something falling on the floor. That's when she went to look. No, Angel? The door was not locked, so she opened to look and you already know what happened after. There's just one thing, if you wouldn't mind. What? When you went to Mr. Soe's cabin, Miss Pavlova, was he already dead? Why? I already told you. When Nina opened the door of student's cabin and looked inside, I was asking Miss Pavlova. Well, Miss Pavlova? The... Oh. Yes, that is right. I saw him. It was dark and he was wearing black, but he was on the floor, not moving. I was scared. I understand. And I believe you. So is that finally it now? Have we discovered the real truth about Cosmo's death at last? Ha! <laughs> Something very nearly slipped my mind. Oh, Mr. Sholmes. This photograph. Yes, I took this myself, you know. The cause of death was a broken neck, therefore the victim died instantly. And the unfortunate incident pre that precipitated these events, a kitten on which the victim stumbled. However, those are the facts. There's one particular area in this photograph that seems to me somewhat unnatural. What do you mean unnatural? What are your thoughts on the matter, Mr. Naruhodo? Hmm? Uh, oh, well, I mean, it is weird that he's face down, I guess? I don't really know what angle he needs to fall to, like, break his neck, but... If Cosma tripped and fell, by some terrible stroke of luck, a bad luck broke his neck. Which part of this photographic print seems unnatural? I mean, his his neck, I guess. 
his hands clenched. Uh, his, his neck? Maybe? I mean, the writing's unusual, but I feel like we've already established that he didn't write it. So, yes. just just the neck then, I guess. Is it is it here? Nope. putting yourself would you land victim has what of your hands oh oh I see it I don't know how we heal health by the way so I'm just gonna reload real quick it's this yes. right All right if you really fell due to an unfortunate accident then this fist just doesn't seem quite white The exact same thought occurred to me. In a fall, one instinct is to open the palms flat. Yet here we see the victim with his left hand tightly balled into a fist. Almost, you might say. As though he were gripping something. What do you mean? Simply that I took the liberty of investigating the victim's fists a short while ago. You did? And what, pray, do you imagine I found there, my dear fellow? Mr. Shum, show us, please! Why, of course, my dear madam, would I keep you in suspense? This is what I found. Oh, it's the other earring! I thought it was weird that she had, like, two not matching ears. Oh! A crescent moon with a little gemstone in the middle. Yes, you're right. A crescent moon. It's very pretty, but what does it tell us? <laughs> tells us nothing. I'm not so sure. That crescent moon looks... It looks familiar somehow. I'm sure I've seen it somewhere before. Observation, Mr. Narohodo. That is the key. What? The truth is now tantalizingly close. Oh, how that crescent moon come to be in Cosmo's clenched fist. This is the final clue. The last piece of the puzzle. Ask yourself, what does this little crescent moon mean? What significance has it? And observe. Find the answer with your own eyes. Right here. But also left here. I mean, it's it's the one missing off the right ear, but I assume we have to match it to the ear. Miss Pavola, Pavlova, on your ear there. I see you have a crescent moon as well. <gasps> Va. And on your other ear, there seems to be a crescent moon missing. The little link holding it on must have broken, I suppose. Now the missing crescent moon was found in the victim's clenched fist. Clearly there's only one logical conclusion. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Narohoto? Yes. Miss Pavlova. Mr. Asogi must have grasped that crescent moon and pulled it from your ear. Perhaps just moments before he fell to the floor. In other words, last night in Mr. Asogi's cabin, you witnessed the moment when the victim fell with your own eyes. In fact, you were quite literally at arm's length from him. But then the question is, why did Mr. Sogi do that? Why did he pull your earring from your ear and hold it in his clenched fist during his final moments? Oh no. Angel? 
No one can protect you now. Please, Miss Pavola, tell us the truth. Last night, what did you do to Cosma? Mm. Interesting. I wonder. I'm. I'm wondering if this relates to that renegade somehow, like the person from the, the what's gonna call it. When I think about everything that happened yesterday, it was too much. Running away, the fishing boat in the middle of the night, trying to climb onto this huge ship. Right there. We have at last in this cabin I could relax after this horrible long day. Darka, wait! Couldn't believe when she disappeared through the, the ventilator. I tried to call her with a little whistle. I I tried waving a favorite toy, but nothing worked. Daka would not come back. What are you doing here this time of night, Inspector? Oh. I'm sorry. I thought it was a friend of mine. The young man from your country, he was very polite and kind. He helped me find Darka, and he promised not to tell anyone. But then, when I had my friend in my arms again, I was going to leave the man's cabin. Just a moment. Sorry, but... Oh, yes? I'm sure I know your face. I've seen you somewhere before. Ha! Huh. Ah, of course. You're Nikolina Pavlova, aren't you? The Russian ballerina. Huh? No, I don't know that name. My heart nearly stopped when he said that. He knew who I was. How could this man from a land in the faraway east know a Russian ballerina? Yes, I saw your performance in Japan. The beauty of the ballet made a deep impression on me. But what are you doing on this ship? I'm sure I read that your ballet company was performing in Shanghai at the moment. I can't fool him. And I have to tell him the truth. And hope he doesn't tell anyone. I have no other choice. Hmm. I see. So you've run away. Please. Please keep my secret. Don't tell anyone. Give me a moment. I could use another opinion here. Ah, this is how she knew that someone was in the... He's going to pull that cord. He's going to tell the captain. Why did I think I could trust him? Then it happened. Everything at once. It was only a second, but it felt like forever. Wait! I shouted, and then... Darker jumped out of my arms and down to the young man's feet. And... As he turned around to look at me... I... I pushed him. I don't even know why. I don't know why I did it. I, I was just so scared. And... I had to stop him from telling anyone about me. And that's when you went to fetch help from Seaman Stroganov, who was on duty out on the passageway. I heard Nina cry out on the third on floor, so I ran to her. She was standing at cabin door, shaking like leaf. She looked at me and said, Help me, Biff. If they find out, I'll be... Please, I have nowhere to go. So you decide to help. And that's when you arrange things in Cosmo's cabin to make it look like it did it. So that no one would suspect the passenger of the cabin next door. Yes. I went to cabin and I looked around to make sure there was nothing to show Nino was there. And then I found Stoyway in wardrobe, still sleeping. Right, that's when he found me. So you worked out a plan to lay the blame on the stowaway. 
I close wardrobe doors and put back strange paper sign. Luckily for me, that's the only reason Susado san started believing I said I was innocent. I dragged young man's body to a good place and used ink that was spilling to write on floor. I write wardrobe, so the person who found will look inside wardrobe and find story. And tell me, what of the glass bell? It was by my feet, so I picked it up. I see. But it was dark in the cabin. I didn't notice the other half. The angel went back to her cabin, and I finished too. By pressing the emergency alarm button in the passageway. Yes. Accordingly, the SS Burrow did indeed come to an emergency halt at a little after 2 a.m., thus enticing the bolt in the cabin door to slide shut, creating the locked room mystery. And there's still one thing I don't understand, Miss Pavlova. What? Well, you said that you told Cosmo about the fact that you'd run away from your homeland. It's because you were worried you were going to tell the captain that you pushed him. Isn't that right? Yes. But even if you had pulled the bell cord and called for the captain of the ship, aren't you friends with every member of the crew? Why would that have been a problem? First, what he said first. That made me scared. What he said first? Oh, the inspector part? Yeah. What are you doing at this time of night, inspector? Oh. Sorry. That was a friend of mine. He said an inspector was his friend. Ah, yes, me, me. Who was supposed to be acting as his bodyguard. I thought that if police knew about me, they would arrest me. So before you could pull the cord, I... May I stop you a moment, please, Miss Pavlova? It just doesn't seem to make sense. I mean, was Mr. Asogi really going to pull the bow cord? I don't know. What? What do you think, Mr. Naruto? Well, I'm not Cosmo, so I can't know for certain, but... He was a man of his word. If he told you he wouldn't give your secret away, then he wouldn't have done. No, he, he was walking over to it. He was going to pull the cord. He was going to make them send me back. Well, Mr. Naruto, the day's work is not yet done, it seems. There is one more deduction to make. What? Another one. Yes, what action was the victim really about to take at that violent? He was going to open the wardrobe, obviously, and get our opinion on it. Can we determine whether the young man's gaze was directed? First, consider the victim's location within the cabin. That's easy. Remember to detail the room. I mean, yes, I spent quite a lot of time in the wardrobe, but still. That cabin has been my home for this entire voyage. So this is how the cabin looked last night, when Miss Pavlova visited Kaz last summer. Yes, is exactly how it was. Are you ready then, Mr. Naruto? Yes! There's one thing I've learned today, is that a simple gaze can reveal all manners of truth. And not only that, in order to draw the right conclusion, you can't afford to be out by even a little bit when you're following the gaze to where it lands. So, when he turned away from Miss Pavlova, what exactly was Cosmo looking at? He was looking at the wardrobe. Take that! Take that! Considering everything that happened last night, certainly it made it look as though Cosmo was going to ring the bell cord. Yes, however. What is directly besides the bell cord? The wardrobe. The wardrobe. 
And more importantly, what was inside the wardrobe? The man's great friend. Sleeping soundly. Ah. Miss Pavlova, please. Think back very carefully. What were Mr. Soe's exact words last night? Give me a moment. I could use another opinion here. Another opinion. Yes, but not from a member of the crew. No, Mr. Sogi intended to consult his close friend on the matter. To see if, between them, they might be able to help in some way, no doubt. Oh, oh no. Sadly, we can't know the truth for certain now. It's too late for that. But I wish we had made sure what Mr. Sogi was looking at. Things may have ended very differently if you had. Miss Pavlova. I want to thank you for finally admitting the truth. But unfortunately, the truth is a man lost his life because of what you did. And that will never change. I hope you'll never forget that. I'm sorry. Really, I'm so, so sorry. What have I done? And so, at long last, the mystery surrounding the tragic accident on the SS Buria was finally laid to rest. What will happen to Miss Pavlova now, then? Once we reach Great Britain, she'll be handed over to the British police at Scotland Yard. What about the fact that she ran away from Russia? Won't the Russians try to repatriate her? Apparently, the English detective can speak to the immigration office and sort all that out. Mr. Sholmes can do that? So she won't be going back to Russia, then? No, I don't think so. Even if she wanted to return in the future, I doubt she'd be able to. She ran away, so now she's in exile for life. I see. I'm sorry. Seaman Sorgonov? I wanted to help our angel, no matter what. But I didn't think about you, about how you lost good friend. I will go with Nina. I will give myself to British police. That's kind of you. In the meantime, thank you for letting me go free again. Cosmo's death feels like such a waste, but... Well, do what you can for Miss Pavlova, won't you? Duh. Well, I'm afraid you need to pack now. We're due to arrive in Hong Kong tomorrow. As much as it pains me, I'm going to have to hand you over to the Consul to arrange your passage back to Japan. <sighs> yes. I did stow away after all. Couldn't really expect any different. So, you should get back to your cabin now. Looks like my study tour to Great Britain is over before it even began then. To think that only days ago, Cosmo and I were laughing together about how we'd tear up the streets of London. Well, it seems like a distant memory now. Oh, what's that? Is it someone weeping? Oh, Susado. Susado son? No, Horo san. Hi. I didn't know you had returned. Oh, uh, well, I haven't been back long. Inspector Hosonaga just told me I should pack. You know, where you leave the ship tomorrow and all that. I still can't believe this has happened. I can't believe someone's life can be over just like that.
se sara sa. You had such grand ideas for this visit to Great Britain. So many dreams. And now they've been cruelly taken away. Just as he has. And I thought I could never forgive the person responsible. But now... Now we know the truth. That it was just an accident. Just a silly series of mishaps. It's too much, not hold us on. It's just too much. Yes, I know. I wish there was something I could say. Inspector. My duty was to see Asogi-san safely to Great Britain. But I failed. And caused his two closest friends great pain and suffering as a result. I've let everyone down. And I will do anything to make up for my terrible blunder. Nobody blames you, Inspector. And I'm free again now that... Huh? <laughs> Surprise, Mr. Naruhodo. What, what, what is the meaning of this? Oh, a trifling matter. Simply that in my head, I think I shall always picture you wearing those shackles. Without them, the balance seems all wrong. It's distracting. Sorry? So I decided to restore them. For old time's sake, shall we say. You are a stowaway after all. <laughs> Thinks this is funny? Mr. Sholmes. I do appreciate all your assistance. I'd like to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Not at all. Not at all. And though it is a little late, may I offer my sincere condolences? The loss of your companion is truly heartrending. I hope that you'll be able to fulfill some of his aspirations in his honor. I'm afraid that won't be possible. We shall be disembarking at the next port, in Hong Kong. We have to return to Japan and make a full report about everything that's happened. What? Wait a minute. It's just me that has to go back, isn't it? I mean, I was the stowaway. The terms of the study tour were negotiated by the Department of Justice in both Great Britain and Japan. It was to be one lawyer and one assistant. Was to be? In the light of Mr. Sogi's unfortunate death, I'm afraid the study tour can no longer go ahead. Oh no. I don't care for me, but... Poor Susato-san. My dear fellows, the majority of problems have an extremely simple solution, you know. All you require is one lawyer, and the study tour can continue, surely. But there is no one else with the necessary qualifications, Mr. Sholmes. We know no other lawyer. Qualifications, you say? Any qualifications obtained in your own country will be of little value in Great Britain, I'm afraid. Oh, but... But anyway, the voyage to London still promises a good month of time. Ample opportunity, I would say, to find yourself another suitable lawyer. Yes. Um, Miss Susato? Yes? Do you think perhaps I might be able to do it? Huh? But you're not a lawyer, Mr. Naruto. Wrong! We were a lawyer in court in the first se in the first episode, okay? Oh, unless... Are you studying law? N no, I'm not, but... I'm sorry, in that case, I don't think there's even a chance it could work. But as I said, there's still more than a month before we reach England shores. Isn't that right, Mr. Naruto? Yes, I have a month in which to study, to learn what I'm asked between a lawyer and Great Britain. Mr. Naruto, that's ridiculous! Are you seriously suggesting anybody could learn all of that in just 40 days? There's only one way to find out! I would work my fingers to the bone, Inspector, every single day. Will you let me try? And if... By the time we reach Great Britain, I haven't learned enough to be recognized as a lawyer. 
I'll take whatever punishment is deemed appropriate. But why put yourself in such a difficult position? For Cosma, he said that there was something he had to do in Great Britain, and that he would sacrifice anything to make it happen. I was passionate about it. Can't let all that passion just come to nothing. Anyway, it's for my own benefit too. I will become a lawyer. I have to. What do you say, Mr. Sato? Oh, look at that smile. Look at that smile. I think it's a wonderful idea. Thank you. So, what does our bespeckled inspector friend say? Are you serious? One lawyer and one assistant. The numbers are indisputable. No, 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 it's madness. Yet fascinating, wouldn't you agree? Fascinating. Duty and rules are the dull routine of assistance that we have all poor. Give us interest. Give us fascination. Speak for yourself. Besides, qualifications are no measures of a man. What matters is character, no? And you've witnessed ample evidence of this man's exemplary character today with your own eyes. From the early hours of this morning until this very moment now. Despite continuing with the passing of his clothes his close companion, and despite the accusation of guilt, this man has shown resourcefulness, intelligence, and above all, courage. Very right, well. I'll think of a clever way to word my report to the Department of Justice. Inspector! After all, I did just make a promise, didn't I? I said that I'd do anything at all to make up for my shortcomings here. Oh, thank you, Inspector. If you'll excuse me, I must pay a visit to the Captain's quarters, I think. I need to discuss what to do next, and how best to make my report. Are you really prepared to attempt this, Mr. Narahodo? Yes, I'm gonna try. I wonder, would you consider teaching me what I need to know? Everything about being a lawyer. I would be delighted to help you. I am a judicial assistant, after all. Yeah, you are. Thank you. And Mr. Narahodo. I'd like you to take charge of this. What? Me? Are you sure? I'm sure it's what Cosmo Sama would have wanted. Its name is Karma. It's a great sword that's been in the Asogi clan for generations. Very well, I accept. I'll treasure it always. So then, Miss Susato. It seems we'll be working together for some time to come yet. It will be an honor, Mr. Naohoro. And for the next 40 days, I shan't grant you a single minute of freedom. We shall fill every spare moment with study. Look, she's so fucking cute. It's exactly what I need. But... Before we begin, I have an earnest favor to ask of you two. Goodness, what is it? Please throw me to the ground. Three times. What? I should never have doubted you. You were Cosmos' almost closest friend. Of course you would never have done anything to hurt him. That should have been obvious to me from the start. But I allowed suspicion to get the better of me. And no matter how upset I was feeling, it's completely unforgettable. Unforgivable. No, you were in shock. You just found out about me stowing away, and the cabin door was locked from the inside. No, I won't let you make any excuses for me. Whatever the circumstances, I should never have thrown you. 
Not just once, but five times. Huh. That number keeps creeping up, doesn't it? Please, you must. Just take hold of me and throw me. Do it. Don't even think about it. <laughs> I don't even know how. Never thrown anyone in my life. Very wise, Mr. Naruto. It isn't a skill one acquires without considerable training. Oh, Mr. Sholmes. I absorbed your throwing technique several times with great interest. I confess I was most impressed. When did he see that? I presume that would be a form of Japanese wrestling. Oh, well, in a way. It's not wrestling, but my own interpretation of an ancient jujitsu technique. Apparently, it's called the Susado Takedown. Leave your head swimming. Leave me. Hmm. Help a guy lead. I am a practitioner of the combative arts myself. I am a somewhat accomplished boxer. It's true. Sherlock Holmes practiced baritsu. There he goes, dancing around again. I wonder if you'd be so kind as to instruct me on the technique of your arresting throw. Yes, I'd be honored. Then let us not dally. Demonstrate, my dear madame. Oh, of course. On me, huh? Yeah. Fucking do it. Sorry. Hey! -ya! <laughs> Why would you do that? As you can see, you throw from the abdomen. Oh, yes. Arresting indeed. And that is what you term the Susado takedown, is it? Actually, no. That was a Susado squash. Uh, in my groggy state of consciousness, the scene from the evening recently spent with Cosmo flickered into my mind. Karma. Oh, is his spear going to be in the sword? That's right. The prize sword that's been passed down through generations of the Sogi clan. I can't believe you managed to get permission to bring it with you. I mean, taking a katana on a study tour is more than a little irregular, surely. The Japanese man's sword is his soul, Rinosuke. I can't be parted from my katana. Karuma guides me. I truly believe that. So its name compels its wielder to slice evil in two. Not that you need much compelling. And on that subject... There's something very important that I have to do in Great Britain. And I'll sacrifice anything to make it happen. I'd appreciate you seeing it through with me. Uh, of course I will. Whatever it is, I'll, I'll see it through to the end with you. I knew you wouldn't let me down. We have no idea what he needs to do, do we? Nope. We don't. I'm gonna see the place for myself and work it out. In Great Britain's capital, London. Hmm. Fiend. Do, 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 do. All right, there we go. Save complete. The Adventure of the Runaway Room. Interesting. Clouded Kokoro. Unspeakable story. The Hound of the Baskervilles. Interesting. Well, we're not going to do this tonight. Um, but there we go. We've, we've made it through another another story and this one didn't even have like a real murder in it so that was a difference than usual which is good um it the one thing that gets me is like Cosma dying like that like it's like hey here's this sword that's been passed down through generations of this family clan and here's their son off to go to Britain to study to go and lawyer all these things with his assistant, who clearly had, had some feelings. Um, and then, like, he never had kids. Like, great clan of warriors and people with swords and 
etc. And tripping over a cat on a Russian steamship. It's, 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 ah, oh man. <laughs> what a tragedy. And like they said, what a, what a waste of life. And it all could have been prevented if, uh, if Pavlova didn't, didn't make assumptions, I guess. Man. Well. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit bummed about Cosmo being dead. Taylor? Oh, you can... Iris is homemade soup. Iris is homemade dress. Aw, that's cute. Shoma's Japanese jumble mix. <laughs> oh, that's that's good. Wow, that's kind of cool. Huh. Play some short extra episodes with these. In the first of eight excavations, Renoski finds two troubling witnesses from his earlier tribe behind a battle war and has been in the leading to a real tongue lashing. What are these? This is going to include spoilers with the first game story. No? Hmm. Another crime was committed aboard the SS Burra. Interesting. British, okay. So you could theoretically watch these two. Maybe yeah, I might wait until I get through the, the game first. Oh, there's an adorable person here. Okay, that's cool though. Predatorium. Voice clips. Oh, can you have them doing the, uh... Yep. See, so I'll make it a lot unused. Huh. It's neat. Iris Wilson. Oh, Wilson's a girl. I suppose I should have seen that one coming. Everyone knows by now who it is. Your testimony completely contradicts the facts. <laughs> In inconsistency, sir. I mean, yes, there's a clear inconsistency here. I, um, I mean, the defense <laughs> demands its right to a cross examination. <laughs> I will become a lawyer. I have to. Objection. Hold it. That's good. Hold it. Susato <laughs> Mikotoba. Judicial assistant to the defense. Yes, I fully understand. It really is a dream come true. Aww. We must solve this case, Naruho. Prepare. For a Sisato takedown! <laughs> we must solve this case, Naruhodo-san. By ourselves, if we have to. Prepare. For a Sisato takedown! Hiya! <laughs> Objection! Now. Let us engage in the art of deduction, Mr. Narahodo. So everyone, let us begin. Holok Sholmes is proud to present his logic and reasoning spectacular. Oh, it's so good. It would seem the truth is now tantalizingly close. Yes, my mind is quite made up now. There can be no other explanation that accommodates all the facts. I'm a great British consultant detective, the only one in the world. Alright, what does Iris sound like? Objection! Not the voice I expected. It's a great pleasure to meet you both. My name is Iris Wilson. The tea's brewed, and I have some freshly baked biscuits as well. Look! I use this! It's my latest invention! Iris Wilson is proud to present her logic and reasoning spectacular! Huh. Susie was right. You're the best lawyer in the world. Susie, does she call Susada Susie? Objection! <laughs> I have faith in you, Ryonosuke Narohodo. 
as a I'm determined to bring about change in our legal system. I have faith in you, Ryunosuke Narohodo, as a lawyer and as a friend. A Japanese man's katana is his soul. This blade shows me where I need to go and cuts down anything that's in my way. Leave this to me. All you need to do is put your faith in me and I'll do the rest. Objection! I don't think we met this guy. The quintessential look of a sacrificial lamb. Is is this um Von Karma's equivalent basically? What Strongheart has told me all about you. That you're a student who arrived in London but two days ago. A mere amateur. Objection! My lord, with all due respect, this is an outrage! The this has gone on long enough now. The Nipponese are a truly fascinating. Huh. Objection! Sorry. It's intriguing to actually hear them say lines. Portraits. Let's see. Ah. <laughs> like, show him. Sorry. The name's so, like, it's so very silly. Oh, he has hair under there. Well, I guess that makes sense. Steampunk. Baron von Zeeks. <sighs> Miscellaneous. <laughs> There's Ouchie. A lot of people in here. The old Bailey judge, alright. So that's what we'll get in Britain. Roly and. Oh, I thought this is a pat. Or oh, Polly for a second. Lestrade! Excellent. It's gonna be a Lestrade. They really went hard on the Sherlock Holmes stuff, huh? Cool. Alright. That, that was neat to see. Okay, for real Z's, now I'm done. Um, I'll, I'll catch you all tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow. Um, tomorrow is Wednesday. Which means that I need to... Um, I'll be attending my Japanese class as per usual, but um, after that, we'll play some more Yakuza. I did start doing the sub stories, by the way, um, for Akiyama, so I'm gonna try to get through more of those tonight if I don't fall asleep in the next half hour or so, because I'm kind of tired and exhausted. But um, I'm gonna try to keep getting through more of the sub stories so that tomorrow for Yakuza we can dive back into the right back into the story again so that's my plan anyway anyway i hope you all have a good rest of your night or rest of your day whatever time it is where you are and uh boy do i have any interesting any interesting memes for you oh you know there is one thing i my friend sent it to me today it came out three days ago but uh Remember the dog of wisdom? I, I've shown him before. The guy goes, ha pa pa. Um, three days ago, a, a, another one was made. Like, he, the dog of wisdom too was, was created. Hold on. See? There. There he be. So, go forth. Dog of Wisdom 2. Yee.